Okay, guys. Well, I made another great video, but my button on my microphone was pushed in, so it was muted. So I even uploaded it and everything because I didn't need to check it because it was fine because I, I just knew it was fine. But we're going to get on with the content of that. I was talking about an electric furnace service call that I had today. Now, I work on a lot of electric furnaces, and a lot of people hate them for multiple reasons. You know, all the controls are on the floor. You have to lay down. I had to lay down on my side. And some of these places that you have to lay down, these single-wide and double-wide trailers, aren't exactly the Taj Mahal. So you're laying in, you know, where the dog lays, or you're laying where there's a stack of, like, garbage bags or something like that. So people don't like them. But I, but I do like them. I, I really like them a whole lot. So I got to the one today, and it wasn't heating. They said it tripped the breaker. Uh, at that time, I didn't know which breaker it was. So what I did was I got there, and I it actually turned on when I was about to take the door off the front of it. And the blower was running, but it wasn't heating. So the first thing I did was I, you know, I went to see if how many amps it was pulling. It was just pulling up amps for the blower. And after tracing down the signal for the low voltage, I found that it wasn't getting enough voltage to the relays. It was getting, because I had my little, my south wire just a voltage tester, so it tells me 6, 12, 24, all the way up to 240 volts. So it was giving me like a, a 12. It turned out being around, you know, 15, 16, 17, 18, right in there. And the issue was the transformer was no good. So what I did was I swapped the transformer out. And the elements came on. In fact, all 15 kW, there was what would have been a double stack, which I'm referring to a sequencer. When I talk about a double stack sequencer, for lack of a better word, I'm going to draw you one here real quick. The use of technology. Bear with me. Typically, there's you know, a few different arrangements on electric furnaces. Now, they can have contactors, and that's fine, but they have to be wired according to what's controlling the blower basically we'll get to that in just a second so i'm going to show you sort of what i mean this may look stupid okay there it is you see it there there's a sequencer you'll have the low voltage on either side of the bottom a set of high voltage terminals here and another set of high voltage terminals up top there'll be like 5 kw here 5 kW running through here, and this will be the low voltage signal. Like the W and the common will be here at the bottom. One side will be the W wire, one side will be the common. And then you'll have two elements on a double stack, is what I call those. A single stack is basically same thing, except it's taken off the top. You'll have terminals coming off the top and side on the top, particular run, but they're both, you know, they're connected internally. And typically you'll have either a 10 kW electric furnace, a 12 kW, 15 or 20 is what I work on most often. In the case of the 10, you just have either the one double stack sequencer or you can have a contactor. On the 15s and 20s, typically they have a double stack sequencer and a single for the 15 because each one of those holds 5 kW. Just think of it. Singles 5, double stacks 10 because it holds two runs, or powers two elements, basically. And then you'll have the 20 kW, which is two double stacks. And these are high amperage, about 20 amps per 5 kW. So if you have 20 kW, you're going to have, let's say that right, 20 amps per 5 kW, so that's 80 amps. It's really late at night, actually. can't believe I'm staying up this late, actually. It's 12.24 I'm recording. If I hadn't screwed up, I'd be done already. So when I got to this furnace, so we fired up the elements. Everything was working fine, but when I shut things off, the blower dropped out immediately. One of the, the single stack sequencer was still powered up. It took about five seconds, and it let off, and it was good. The reason being is because these sequencers or contactors power the blower. When these relays close, and we'll do a little bit more on the function of these relays, but when the relays close, basically you get a different pole powering the blower. You'll have, let's say you have your common is L1 for the blower, and then your speed tap is L2. 
your wire will be on the L1 side of the heating element until that relay closes then it'll switch to L2 because the load goes from around the relay to around the element so then you'll power up your blower now the contactor was powering up this blower the good thing was it comes right on the contactor is immediate there's no delay sequencer there's a delay those bimetal low voltage terminals it'll take about five ten seconds before it comes on depends on which sequencer it is in the order so name that's why they have the name sequencer they go in a certain order but this person had to replace a double stack with a contactor so the blower come right on unfortunately whenever that shuts off it goes right off again because it's immediate there's no delay but the sequencer has a delay so every time the furnace shut off sequencer was still on for about five ten more seconds now a lot of times if it's just a few seconds no harm no foul but if it lasts more than a few seconds that chamber is going to get real hot now the limit switch might take it out just as a safety precaution but if that happens over and over again you're going to get damage to the wiring damage to the components and it's potentially going to you know, burn your single wide down which you don't want so whenever you're changing out these sequencer relays if you have a 15 or 20 kW furnace which has these multiple sequencers you're probably going to have to go back with the same stuff I mean you could use two different contactors if you want to just so the timing is the same but they build these plates that have multiple sequencers on them for particular furnaces and it might just be the best way to go but of course you can do it either way but a lot of times just follow what's already there and you'll be good to go the unfortunate part is a lot of times when I'm working on electric furnaces they will have people come through that don't really know what they're doing and I'm not trying to be mean to people I'm just saying because I'll come behind them my electric furnaces and there'll be a whole bunch of like wires everywhere all the old components will be laying at the bottom I mean, how you see these we used to have H what's it hack free HVAC did get a rooftops video with all the compressors sitting up on the roof he threw them off the side of the roof he threw off I think a Goodman condenser off the side electric furnaces are the same way on a smaller scale you'll see all the peanut blower relays at the bottom you see the sequencer you see these plates with the double sequencers on them all be laying down at the bottom these things last forever because a lot of times these things are in places that are rented especially where I'm at there's a lot of rental trailer parks around here and it doesn't all trailer park has a bad stigma they're not all bad places but the furnaces are old as hell I mean a lot of times the furnaces are 20 30 years old all the wires are cracked and brittle so it's real important to get them looked at every year a lot of people don't do that a lot of people get them looked at either when they smell fire or when the heat shuts off but hopefully you guys got a little bit out of this as far as watching when you're changing out the relays you want to keep it uniform you don't want to use sequencers and contactors I mean you could theoretically do it that way sometimes but it's just best to keep it the way it was before now if you have a 10 kW furnace which is about the smallest electric furnace you can get I think there might be a 5 kW electric furnace out there somewhere I'm, I've never used one before but you can change that out with a contactor and that's okay because it's all being controlled from the same relay but if you have multiple relays you probably want to just go ahead and use the sequencers all right guys well um, hopefully I got through this hopefully you can hear me I don't have the chat up right now so I can't see it uh, but I hope you enjoy this this will be on the working Joe's website too, a little article with this video so hopefully you go and read that as well uh, everybody have a good night for those of you on the west coast I guess it's only 9 30 but it's 12.30 on the East Coast, so I'm going uh, to go to bed, guys. I'll see you on the next one.